Hi, I'm uh, Zekti. Uh, I recently started a discussion in the Hexcells Steam community forum about level editors and level formats. And I have a few things to say about that. And uh, I don't want to write it all down in a post I want to show you, so I create this video. Um, so this is the editor that I, that I wrote. I don't really want to show off all the details, you know, you can uh, build hexes and stuff and uh, create hints, whatever you want. Um, but I don't really want to talk a lot about that because uh, another guy, Black Pirate, already um, created this editor here and it's, it, it's pretty good already and uh, so you can create hexes. And you see there's, there's a shadow when I click and, and uh, uh, you can do nifty things like uh, do this lasso and then move them all around. So it's it's pretty well made. You can really tell this guy knows his libraries. So um, I think that's that's a great basis to start from. And my editor is, is a bit more clumsy in some regards. But um, I do want to talk about uh, a few aspects of level creation and what I think is important. For that purpose, I want to walk you through the creation of one level that I made. So not, nothing fancy, but, but something to show off the thought processes that uh, at least I go through in, when trying to create something. So you create a Hexels level not from the beginning to the end, but you create it from the end to the beginning. So you start off with something that is obviously solvable. So let's say something like this, where the two is revealed, so circle means revealed. Uh, if I play this, then well, it's it's trivial. I can solve it. And now, from from that, which is the ending of the level, I think about how I get to know the information that is needed, uh, that is revealed here. So, for example, I could get the information about the two by having two cells here, one of which is blue and one of which contains a number. And now, starting from here, I can. Whoops. Uh, I wanted to reveal this too. Starting from here, I can, um, well, solve the level. So um, one thing which you probably already noticed, so if I have a grid in the in the background, then I'm in, in uh, the level editor mode, and if I don't, um, I, I press the tab key for that. So if I don't, then I'm in, in playtest mode. And um, right, so I, I, w I was creating this level. So let's say, um, this information should be deduced from previous steps, so I can do this by putting a connectivity hint around here. And now, if you think about it, this is this is way too easy, and I didn't. Uh, and I can. Um, so if I start from here, I don't even have to use this one. So let's change that. Let's make another cell blue here, and then I indeed need this information about the one. By the way. It would be nice to, to, to check whether this information, whether this one is actually needed. So in particular, I want to, want to know if this level is indeed unsolvable, while this level here is solvable. So uh, in order to do that, I could think very hard about the level, and in this, this case it would be uh, actually not all that hard. But um, it would be nice to have, to have support from the editor for this. And what I did was I um, uh, created a routine that, that displays the next possible steps to me. So if I press my magical key, then it now shows me, in this configuration, these are the next moves that I can make without guessing. And from this position, there's nothing I can do. So indeed, uh, the level in its current form has no, um, no solution without guessing. Okay, and if I reveal this one, then well, it's it's pretty trivial. So now I can um, I can fill in the rest. So um, this level is solvable; the other is not, and it's good to have an to have a, f a confirmation for that by by a tool. Okay, so um, what what could I do now? I could, for example, um, have this one not revealed at the start and. Um, have another information there. So, for example, this three here, which um, happens to not suffice in this case because I can mark these three blue and are then stuck. So I need more information. 
So um, what I can do is uh, is is this here. This this works out well because if this so if this is revealed, then I know this this group contains one blue cell. This group contains one blue cell. So um, this is this is empty since um, so you you know you you can you can solve it for yourself. So you know how hex cells work. This is a flower and this tells me this is a one and from there I can solve it. All right. So um, if I would work further backwards, I would um, I would maybe now fill in these. Uh, these fields to have a proper shape and then um, fiddle around until it's an interesting level, uh, which I did do, but I don't want to repeat this process now. I just wanted to show off two things. So firstly, it's nice to be able to switch from editor mode to, 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 to um, play mode and back immediately uh, without delay. And while being in the process of solving a level, um, go into the editor, uh, change it somehow, and continue in uh, from, this, from the, the, the state I left it. So these blue cells are still marked blue because this is where I left off. And these cells are now added. Uh, I just added them in the editor and I can add more, more cells. Um, this is in contrast to, um, to an editor where you always have to, to, to a um, a test mode where you would always have to start over. I think this this would be problematic, or this would um, be cumbersome. Uh, secondly, um, I think I, I I made this clear that that I really like uh, my um, this 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 possibility of this playing the next possible moves, which currently don't exist because um, I I somehow messed up the level, but in that situation they existed. Great. So now I want to talk a bit about. Um, so uh, now I want to talk a bit about computational complexity, but I'll not admit that I'm doing that until uh, um, I'm ready to make the point. So I'm going to talk about wires instead. So consider these two things here. Those are what I call wires, and they can be in two different states. So. Um, one possibility is that um, this here is empty. From that I can conclude that this is blue, then this is empty, then this is blue, and this is empty. And the other possibility is that we start off with blue and uh, you see how this works. We are always alternating between blue and, and black. But these are the two states the wire is in, and those are the only possible states. And what I can do with that is information is, is um, forwarding information from one part of the level to another part of the level. So if I have two parts that are connected by a wire, then from knowing what this cell here is, so the first cell of the wire, I can deduce what the last cell of the wire is, so if it's blue or, um, blue or black. And this is interesting. Um, and another way of, of um, writing a wire, for example, is uh, this shape here, so a wall of ones. This is something that everybody who has ever played Minesweeper knows, uh, knows uh, that, it, uh, that it exists. And in hex cells, it also um, happens at times. Another thing I can do with wires is, is fork them. So um, if I start with blue cell here, I know this one is black, I know this one is blue, and now information continues to travel in both ways. And uh, any information can therefore be broadcast to many different places. Uh, this here is, a, is an interesting structure. Uh, let's think about what it does. So we have three incoming wires, one, two, three. And here we have a structure that basically says one of the incoming wires must have a blue at the end. Now why is that? Uh, imagine none of them had a blue cell at the end, so all of those were black. Then um, we wouldn't have enough uh, valencies at this three to accommodate for um, for all three uh, blue cells, so we on only have two neighboring cells. So that's not possible. So at least one of them must be blue. And indeed, uh, any number, one, two, or three works, if you think about it. So what this thing says is uh, one of the wires, at least one of the wires, must be in a certain state, say state one. And now what have have we done? So if you 
know something about computational complexity and theoretical computer science and all, then what we basically did was reduce the so-called free satisfiability problem to uh, hex cells, which says that if you were able to solve hex cells problems in in in, in a short time, so quickly in in a computer, then you would also be able to solve. Um, free satisfiability problems which nobody believes that uh, can be done in f faster than an exponential time. So any uh, program that solves hex cells levels or does something similar like like providing providing hints or showing the next moves or something like that will have to be uh, will have to take exponential time in the size of the level. So this is uh, interesting um, because it tells us that we do not have to bother creating algorithms that run in quadratic time or um, cubic time or, or something because that's not possible at least nobody believes it is uh, yet this is just a theoretical point and you can indeed you have seen that this problem is is solvable for small levels and Hextel's levels that um, are typically solved by humans are, are small, so um, it's tractable. The approach that I used uh, for this uh, displaying of red cells where the next moves are possible is I um, fed it to a so-called uh, mixed integer linear programming solver, which uh, <laughs> and solves mathematical equations for you. Uh, this is one approach you could probably do better by um, writing your own implementation that uh, doesn't need to pass all the information over and over again. But um, well, as I as I said, it will be exponential. Um, my implementation here takes about um, a second, a bit less than a second, to compute these things for. Uh, this particular level. So for larger levels it might be might be a bit worse off but uh, it can be improved quite a bit. Right so those were the points that I that I wanted to make some practical stuff about uh, actual level creation that might be relevant some computer science stuff that is only relevant to those who <laughs> enjoy theoretical computer science. So thanks for sticking along and um, I hope to see some development in the future regarding these editors and the level format in particular which is the, the biggest obstacle right now. So I hope uh, Matthew will respond in any way. Let's see how this continues. I'm interested in seeing how the editor uh, provided by Black Pirate evolves and um, I'll see you guys in the forum. Have a nice day. So I forgot one thing about this um, wire thing, this uh, NP completeness thing. So you need for wires to be able to cross. So let's see how this works. So you have one wire coming from here and going to here and one uh, going from the top left to the bottom right. And it's not all that easy to do it in a way such that they don't disturb one another. And this is this is roughly how it works. So um, if we if some information comes from here then you can easily see that it will be duplicated at this position and these two cells have the same value whichever it is so it, in this case it's blue and this is the same this is also true for this side so either those two are blue or those two are um, black they cannot be both blue because we have this three here so they are both black and indeed we have forwarded this information through this crossing and well, you can now check that this that the same thing works here so um, if I have an information coming here then um, it will travel through this this knot so if you do it naively you might run into problems with the information from this wire kind of running in the wrong wire or something like this this can be solved with well this structure so now I'm done.